From Eyewitness News, this is the Tarbox Toyota Hyundai Friday Night Football Wrap. Welcome to week five of the Tarbox Friday Night Football Wrap. A busy night across the region. Let's get things started with a full slate of Division I games. Every team in the division in action. We start out with undefeated Bishop Pendrickin making the trip to Cranston Stadium to take on West in the first, Sandrickin QB Patrick Gill over the middle to Mitchell Lucci. Good for the 20 yard score. 6 0. Now lining up for the extra point. Snap goes to the kicker. Robert Leinberger finds Marco Davecchio. Two point conversion. Gill adds four rushing touchdowns. Sandrickin rolls 36 to nothing. A game shifted to the afternoon. LaSalle trying to keep pace in the D1 standings. Playing in South Kingstown. Rams off to a slow start, but finding a groove in the second quarter. Down 14 7. Anthony Francis, the keeper, in for six. Extra point. Game tied at 14. Then right before the half, Francis to Keon Wilson breaks free for 63 yard strike. One of his two touchdowns on the day. LaSalle knocks off SK 39 to 14. Another team that entered the night tied atop Division I, Cranston East. In fact, the Bolts came in to their battle at East Providence at a perfect 5-0 first possession. EP quarterback hit ball out. Eric Gomes comes up with the fumble. Ensuing drive, Alex Cravesi to Jimmy Saab. Bolts would jump out to a 14-0 lead. Second quarter, Cravesi to Marquette Monroe. 46 yards, Cranston East rolls to 6-0. Bolts play Hendrickin next week. Portsmouth still a game back. And their only loss was to LaSalle. The Patriots hosting Division I newcomer Tolman. Tigers putting up a good fight on the road. Down 8-2. to two. That's a baseball score. Morikita punches it in. Tolman a 9-8 second quarter lead. But the Pats come right back. Ensuing drive. Bobby Chavos over the middle to Matt Greenman. He does the rest. 43 yards to the house. Portsmouth now 3-1 in division play. 42-14 the final. Barrington also just one loss in the division, playing a non-league game against Bishop Fian. Shamrock's up big in the fourth quarter and adding Nick Romero. Handoff to Matt Glebus in from five yards out, 24-0. Fian, the Eagles trying to find some momentum, but on third down, Seamus Cuddy, the big sack. Eagles shut out at home, 24-0 was the final. Coming up next on The Wrap, we check in on the Division II scene in Cranston East. Head coach Tom Centauri live in studio. Much more Wrap still to come. Hi, we're the Westerly Cheerleaders. Stick around for more Tarbox football round. The lone undefeated team in Division Two A, the Johnson Panthers, looking to keep things going in Coventry. Late third quarter, Victor Halton takes the handoff, fighting through a swarm of defenders, we think. Fakes out everybody, including our cameraman. 25-yard touchdown at the end of it. Coventry trying to get something going in the fourth. Mike Nolan under pressure. Let's it fly. Then check out the effort by Brennan Pappas. Great interception. The Panthers are 5-0, 26-6. The final. A Westerly suffered its first loss of the season last week, and they are pumped up down there in Bulldog country. Looking to get back on track against Tollgate. Opening drive of the game. Westerly in the red zone. Adam Mitchell. Pounds it in for the early lead. Westerly back on 0 in the second quarter. Mitchell gets the ball again right up the middle. 35-yard score. Westerly rebounds at a big time with 34-6 victory for the Dogs. The defending Division II champs, Cherahoe, looking to end a two-game losing streak at Warwick Vets. First half action, Cherahoe with the ball behind 6-0. The handoff to Austin McQuay dives into the end zone. Extra point gives the Chargers a 7-6 lead, but Vets comes right back. The handoff to TJ Boyajian, jukes a defender, off to the races, 31-yard score. Vets wins it, 22-13, the final score. And we now go back to Division I for our coach's corner. Pleased to be joined tonight by Cranston East head coach Tom Centauri. And uh, coach, we really appreciate you coming oh, in you. off uh, a big win. Yep. We saw the highlights tonight at EP. That was a great win. East Province is a good football team. and They've always had a great tradition, but outstanding win for our program. And uh, tell the kids the more we keep winning, the more uh, people are going to keep talking about them. You know, that's funny you mentioned that uh, people are talking a lot about you guys. And, and there was some chatter on the sidelines of your game tonight. And, and some people were saying, hey, we expected this from this team. Did you expect your team to come I, out I, strong? I thought we'd certainly be, have a chance to be a playoff team. But the way they've worked together and every day in practice they do it. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. Um, and I think they have high aspirations as we do as a coaching staff, you know. Yeah, and uh, talk a little bit uh, about your team. You uh, you have a pretty good quarterback. You do. Uh, mm -hmm. And you seem to, you're the offensive guy, right, with right. this team? So just right. talk a little bit about your QB in the offense in general. Alex, I mean, Alex Corvace, he's a, a junior. Um, he, he certainly has done an outstanding job for us. I mean, he threw four more touchdown passes tonight. I believe he's at 14 right now. 
And uh, we have we have some weapons. I mean, Marvin Bove, Marquis Mon Monroe, mm -hmm. EJ Isom, Jimmy Saab, Nick Ferry. Um, there's a, there are a lot of weapons there, and our offensive line uh, has done an outstanding job. So the kids have really, and then very, very unselfish, and that's the best part about them. Yeah, and uh, this is what, your uh, eighth season? My tenth season tenth there. Tenth season. Right. Well, I short-sighted you a little <laughs> bit there, right. Coach. Uh, we'll just talk a little bit about the program and kind of what you've seen, some of the ups and downs and everything, and kind of what brought you to where you are now. Well, we, you know, when I first arrived there in 2003, we're, you know, a Division II team, and uh, we certainly have changed, um, you know, going to Division I, a big school, and it's been a big help to, you know, a school. We have, we have 115 kids in our program from 9 to 12, and, um, you know, our freshman team does a nice job. They had their first loss last night. They lost to Hendrick in 18 to 14, and um, you know we've done we've done a you know a pretty good job. I have an excellent coaching staff. They they work so hard, and uh, we've been the same coaching staff has been together for 10 years. Wow! And that makes that makes all the world a difference, you know, and that that certainly helped us. Yeah, and uh, and obviously some familiarity there with the kids. And, Absolutely. Uh, we we mentioned it too in Division One. There there are three teams still uh, undefeated. A, a pretty big one yeah. next week <laughs> at, at Hendricken for you guys. Right. You ready and, for you know, it? Oh, well, we hope so. I mean, you know, I haven't had a chance to see Hendricken play live, but um, they're a good football team, and uh, we're we know we're going to have a hands full, but. You know, we'll, we'll show up next Friday night, and hopefully, you know, it's going to be a great football game. And uh, this is all we wanted was a chance, and I think we've gotten better, and I think we're getting better every week, and uh, couldn't ask for a bigger game next Friday night. All right, well, we appreciate you to uh, come in and, and talk a little bit about your program, and best of luck to thank you, you and, right. and I'm sure that we'll catch up with you uh, once again here later on this season. That's great, thank you. All right, <laughs> once again, Grant East Head Coach Thompson Torrey. Let's throw it over to Sarah Hogan with more Division II highlights. Sarah. All right, thanks, Eric. Thanks, Coach. After a season opening loss to Cranston West, Cumberland has rebounded to win three straight and enter the night with a one game lead in the standings. The Clippers taking on North Kingstown at Tucker Field, homecoming for the seniors. And they made sure to put on a good show. Brendan Guerin, the pitch to Eric Travers, who powers his way into the end zone. Then a little later, more Cumberland offense as Guerin goes up top to Dan Stock, who reels it in for the Cumberland score. Clippers stay perfect in lead play for the 41-6 win over NK. And Wild finished tonight in Pawtucket Central, looking for its third straight win, taking on St. Ray's Saints with a 14-10 lead. But the Knights driving for the win. Leonard Brown the pass to Eleanor Robin sets up a first and goal for the Knights. But Saints D comes up big on the final play of the game. Careless Chris and Josh Alves combined for the stop at the two. Saints get the win over Central 14 to 10 the final. Another contender that has put up some big time points so far this season. Shea hosting defending state champs Rogers. Vikings defense puts the clamps on the Raiders offense. Shea driving with the ball comes loose. Karan Bostic recovers the fumble for Rogers ending the Raiders drive. Then a little later, Dan LaRue and Kayshawn Word combine for the sack right here. Rogers with a big win on the road, 35-7 over Shea. You know, games in Division Three tonight, so we skip all the way down to D4. Exeter West Greenwich may Making the trip north to face Smithfield. Sentinels up 25 to 6 in the third until Gary Benedetti cuts through the Smithfield D and dives into the end zone. EWG down now by 11. Scarlet Knights trying to hang in. Benedetti again takes it in one yard out to get within five, but Smithfield holds strong at home. 31 to 20 the final. And Hope High School also entered the night 2 and 1 in D4 at Conley Stadium to play PCD Wheeler Juanita Sanchez. Hope leading by one in the second when Matthew Santiago LeBron calls his own number and outruns the Knights D 42 yards. And the Blue Wave extend their lead 14 to 6 after a night turnover. Delonte Wright would uh, take the pitch right here and is gone. Just like that, untouched, 90 yards to the house. That's a play of the night contender right there. Hope wins a high-scoring affair, 57-44, the final. And we have a Connecticut-Rhode Island crossover game. North Providence, the Cougars facing the Panthers in Plainfield. Pick it up in the third. Plainfield up 16-0 and looking for more. Mason DeLorge gets the call, runs through the Cougars to the end zone. Panthers up 22-0, not stopping there. Jordan Federer takes the handoff, now runs Hunter Pawpaw to the pylon. Plainfield all over NP, 28-8 for the final score. And remember to go to WPRI.com to see everything we shot tonight, plus scores from throughout the region. Eric, let's send it back to you. Thank you, Sarah. Coming up with the football wrap continues. We hit the Massachusetts scene. Diane Rehoboth looking to keep things going. Plus stops in Seekonk and Somerset. We'll wrap things up when we come back.
The Tarbox Toyota Hyundai Friday Night Football Wrap continues. We now head to the South Coast Conference frontrunner Dighton Rehoboth trying to improve to 3 and 0. The Falcons open league play by outscoring the first two opponents 33 to 8. DR taking on Bishop Stang. The Spartans trying to get off the Schneid and pick up win number one. No score in the first until quarterback Nathan Kalowski hits Paul Costa 32 yard touchdown. Falcons with a 7 0 lead on their next possession. Mike Mello gets the carry, plowing his way in. Six yard TD. Died Rehoboth wins it 20 to 7, the final. Staying in the SCC, New Bedford, Voke, and Seekonk. Someone will come away with a first conference win. Voke already up 6 0 in the third. Tyler Silva, the spiral, finds the hands of Trevor Mina. And check it out, diving into the end zone, 13 0. Voke, first play of the fourth. Silva again to Mina. This time takes the pitch, untouched. Voke improving to 3 and 2 on the season, 20 0, the final. And our final stop, undefeated Somerset Berkeley hosting Dartmouth. The Indians trying to snap a three-game losing streak. Pick it up in the third. Raiders down three until Garrett Carlos takes the pitch, turns the corner, and he lunges his way into the end zone, breaking the plane. Somerset regains the lead 25-21. to Raiders trying to put this thing away. Carlos gets the call again. This time, plunging in from five yards out. The ground game grinding it into the end zone. That would seal the deal. A good game out there in Somerset. They go on to win it 32 to 29, the final score. Well, we're just about out of time. Now remember to go to WPRI.com to see everything you just saw. Again, plus extended highlights and scores from throughout the region. Again, WPRI.com, the best local football coverage. Thank you for joining us once again on the Tarbox Friday Night Football Wrap. Have a great weekend, everybody.